in this part of the tutorial we are going to make the player jump and to make him jump we'll need to know if he's standing on the ground or not so first of all we'll need to define whenever the player is on the ground and whenever he's in the air so to do that we'll have to add some um, different elements here first of all we'll add to uh, we'll have to add some ground points to him so that when these points collide with the ground then we know he's grounded and when they're not on the ground, well, then he's uh, jumping, so he's not grounded. So to fix this, we will have to click click on the player, select create, and then we can go to the create empty here. So this is the one of the ground points. And we'll have to add that to the player, so just take it and move it all the way as a child object of the player. While you have the ground point, the new game object selected, just move it all the way down to his feet like so like this and then move it like so it's aligned with his feet the bottom of his shoes move it all the way to the right to get one shoe then you can rename this to ground point and right click on it and duplicate it and move it all the way to the right and then again right click on that duplicate it, and move it all the way to the middle so it's placed in between his legs so he has three ground points right he has one on the left shoe, one on the right shoe, and then one in the middle in between. So these ground points can be renamed so that we don't have one, uh, zero, one, and two. So just rename them to ground point maybe. Or unless you want to keep track of which one is which, then you can just keep the one and two on them. So the player needs to have a reference to these ground points. So we need to go to the player script and we need to make a new array here. So underneath facing right, we can write private um, transform and make square brackets after to indicate it's an array. And then we can write uh, ground points. Okay, we will want to set these from the inspector. So we can simply just make this serialize. So like a serialize field here. There we go. And then we save again jump back into unity and then you'll see that on the player this ground point pops up right here we'll have to write free because we have three ground points and then we'll have to assign them one by one so the first one goes into the first slot the next one goes into the second slot and the third one goes into the third slot so we have zero one and two and they're all assigned here as you can see so now we have the ground points and now we need to indicate from our script if the player is standing on the ground or not. So we need to create a bool, private bool and call it is grounded or actually let's wait with that because I'm, I think we actually don't need that. Um, we need to create a function instead actually. So let's go all the way down and write private bool is grounded and here we are going to make an if statement this is if my rigid body dot velocity dot y is less or equal to zero so if we are either falling down or we are standing on the ground or we're not moving then we need to check if we are standing on the ground so that's basically what this if statement does it checks if our velocity is less than zero well then we are falling down um, or if it's equal to zero well then we are not moving anymore and then we need to know if we're standing on the ground so for each transform and this is our point so each point in ground points so we are going to run through every single ground point on our character and then we are going to check if that ground point is colliding with something and we're going to make an array of 2d colliders and uh, so collider just collider 2d there we go and this is going to be all colliders and this array will contain all the colliders um, or, or all the colliders that these ground points are colliding with so it's equal to physics 2d that overlap circle all and we need to say uh, point dot position and then we need a radius 
and we need to know what ground is. So we need to put a radius that indicates how close the player needs to be to the ground before he um, is considered grounded. So we need to go up in the top. Okay, let's try again here and make a private float uh, ground radius like this and let's just make it serialize so we can see it from the inspector here save this and then we need to know what ground is so we need to make a private layer mask and call what is ground so we can indicate what ground is maybe some things are not going to be considered as ground for the player and he should just fall through them, for example. So, here we go. So we are going to create a little collider around every point. So it means if we're here, we have this little ground point here, and around this we're going to make a collider or a little circle, and if that circle overlaps um, some of the ground, well then we know we're grounded. So let's jump back into the script and in here we'll have to say what is it? the radius is the ground radius that we indicate how, how big is this circle going to be that is going to overlap something and the layer mask is going to be what is ground. There we go. And maybe it wants oh, ground radius of course. There we go. So now we create these colliders here. So this one will contain everything that the circles overlap. And then we'll have to check if, um, run, run through this. So we have a for loop um, and we have to run colliders dot length. So if um, colliders I that game object isn't equal to game object. So if this collider actually I could also make it for each in here. Yeah, let's just do it for loop. Um if the current collider I'm looking at isn't the player. So we will always be grounded if we would check if the of if those small circle colliders would overlap the player. But to avoid being grounded when we are in the air because the player is always colliding with them, we'll have to check if the current collider we're looking at is the player's collider. And this basically checks it if the collider we're looking at game object is different from the player because the script is on the player. Well, then we need to check. Yeah, or then we need to uh, set the colliding to true. So then we return true. So here we are colliding. And else out here, we're just going to say return. Okay return false here. So we return true if we're colliding with something else than the player with our feed and we're returning false if um, that's not the case here. Um, let's try to rebuild it's complaining about something. There we go. Okay. So now we have the function for check checking if we are grounded or not. So now we can create that pool uh, we actually had. Let's see here. Um, let's say private pool is grounded and we can actually set it equal to this one inside the not sure I want to do it inside the fixed update I guess here so before we do anything we say is grounded equals is grounded here here we go so our is grounded variable here is going to be equal to the is grounded function and basically you could call this is grounded function inside um, everything else instead of using the variable here but in general I think it is cheaper to call the function once and save the result in a variable here and then we can simply just look at the variable in the rest of the code so we don't need to call this function here multiple times per fixed update so okay so we'll need to check if we're grounded and if we're grounded well then we would like to jump so first of all we need to go to handle movement and in here after we have moved around you have to say if grounded and that we're jumping so we will need to make a 
uh, bull that also indicates if we're jumping. So let's say it's grounded. Private bull. Private bull. Uh, uh, jump. So if is grounded, if we're standing on the ground and jump is true, then we say grounded equals false. Is grounded is false. So if we're standing on the ground, we are pressing the jump button or we are setting jump to true, then we're not grounded anymore. Besides that, we'll also have to make the player jump. So we'll have to say, uh, add some jump force to him. So basically we can go up here and make a private float. And this float should be called jump force. We're going to use it down here in our is ground and jump inside our handle movement. So after we have checked we are on the ground and we want to jump, we said is ground is false. And then we say my rigid body dot add force new vector two. And then we have say we don't want to add force in the f direction, uh, f direction, I mean x direction. So zero. And then we need to use the jump force here to indicate how, how high we want to jump. We will then have to go to our input function called inside handle input here. And here we'll have to check if we press the space button. So up here we can say if input dot get key down key code dot space. Well, then we'll have to say jump equals true because then we said jump to true when we click space. If jump is true, well then next time handle movement is run. If we check are we on the ground, yes or no. The jump set true. Yes, if it's true, then we say, oh, well, we are not grounded anymore. Then we add the force to the rigid body afterwards, so we jump. So let's try to save this. And jump back in here. And let's see if we play the game. Let's see what the player, we need to set some things. Yeah, the ground radius. Mm, what should we put that at? I think it should be a very low number. Um, Let's try to put it at, I don't know, three or something. Not sure if that's small enough. Actually, I think that's way too big. Let's try to point 0 0.2. That's the ground radius right now, I guess. Um, yeah, let's try that. And what else? We don't need to put anything else. Jump, jump speed, we need to put that. Um, let's see, if we go up here, we will see that. The jump force here also needs to be serialized so we can set it from outside. Serialize field. So let's save that and jump back in here. There it is, jump force. Let's try with uh, 400 or something. So let's try. Now we're standing on the ground. Press the space button. Nothing happens. So let's see. The reason that nothing happens, of course, because if we click here, we'll see that uh, what is ground is never set. So now nothing is ground. So we'll have to make this one serialized as well. Go and then save it. Then we go out here and see that what's ground. Nothing is ground right now. So we'll have to put it as everything. For right now, right now everything is ground for us. So if we play the game and stand on ground and press the space button, then you'll see that the character keeps jumping now but as you can see we can actually jump with the character so we need to figure out why he keeps jumping because we need to set him the, his jump to false at some point so he just doesn't keep jumping like this so to set it to false we'll have to go back to the script and we have to go all the way down to um, the reset values here and here we have to say jump equals false and then we have to save it and jump back into the game and let's play one more time. He can run from left to right. I can jump. And now he stops jumping. So he's not able to jump before he hits the ground. If you spam your space button now, you'll see that you can only jump when you hit the ground. Uh, one more thing, as you can see right now, you can actually run in the air. That's maybe not that um, cool to be able to do. 
So we'll have to make sure that we will not be able to run midair unless that um, unless we have air control on or unless yeah unless we we decided that we want to be able to run in the air. Um, so let's just add that little functionality. So we need to go back to the script, and in here we'll need to add one more bool. Just make it under here in the top. Just make a private bool and call it, call it um, actually just put it up here with the other bool so we have them at the same spot and call it air control and then make it serialized so that we can access it from the inspector there we go so now we have that but we can still move let's see here in our here we are adding velocity to rigid body and we will only do this if we are not sliding and we are not attacking and let's see and is grounded um, or air control so air control and is grounded needs to go into this into some parentheses here so parentheses um so we check if we are grounded or we have air control so if we are not grounded here there needs to be an exclamation mark in front of this so we can only move in the air if you're not or we can only move if we're not grounded or if we have air control on if we're not grounded, if we are grounded that's it um yeah that makes no sense it doesn't need to be negative here it needs to be if we're grounded or have air control so yeah now we can only move if we are grounded or we have air control let's try this so right now air control is not on so if i jump i can't move it still plays the animation we'll fix that later but as you can see i'm not able to move in the air right now because air control is not on as you can see here it's not until i land it it uh, reacts so to make him run in the air we can click on this air control if you go to the player script select the player and you click air control on then you'll see that you can suddenly move in the air again here like this but uh, the running animation in the air will be fixed later when we add the jumping animation of course because then the jumping animation is going to take over and it's not going to be a problem to move midair here yes uh, i'm going to leave the air control off because it's more not realistic but it's a better way to make gameplay i think um, that's it for the jumping for now. In the next video, we are going to add the jumping animation to it. So now we have the functionality for jumping. Now we're going to make it look um, like we're jumping.